Okay, thanks for tuning in to another physics video with Mr. M. Uh, in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to solve for a projectile motion type problem. Uh, in this case, um, it'll be a projectile motion that is launched with an angle. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, dive right into this. Our problem for today is uh, a ball is launched from the edge of the top of a building with an initial velocity of 8 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal. The ball strikes the ground at a horizontal distance of 20 meters. And our question is, how tall is the building? Uh, we're going to assume that the building is completely vertical and that our ground is completely horizontal. Okay. Uh, one of the first things that I always do when I solve for these types of problems is I go ahead and draw a picture for myself. Um, I think it's just a good way to visualize uh, what's going on. And so here's our building. We have a ball. It's launched from the edge of our building. It's traveling at 8 meters per second. And it has a 40 degree angle. Okay. That ball ends up landing on the ground. So boom. There it goes, and it was a distance of 20 meters was our distance. Okay, and basically we're just trying to solve what is the height. Okay, what's our vertical distance of this building? Well, now that we uh, have our picture, we understand what's going on. We will be using, and I have included, the three equations that are used for these projectile uh, motion type problems. So the next thing is, uh, and this is what I teach my physics students, is we want to list our known and unknown values. And once we do that, we can figure out which is the appropriate equation to use. And then go ahead, just plug everything in and solve for our unknown variables. Okay. Now, the one thing with these uh, projectile motions that have an angle is that what we need to do is we need to resolve this vector. So if we just isolate this vector at this at this moment right here, we have a vector that is and what we have to do because in our equations we have our horizontal our initial horizontal velocity um, in our horizontal equation. We also have our initial vertical velocity in our vertical equation. The, the way that we're going to get these values is by resolving this vector. Okay, and so to do that, we just need to use what we know about our trig functions. So when we resolve for our x component, what we're really going to do is we're solving for that vxi. And then when we go ahead and solve for our y component of this vector, really what we're solving for is our v, y, i, okay? And we know that this is a 40 degree angle here. Okay, so using some trig in our trig functions, if we want to solve for v, x, i, uh, we're going to end up using cosine, okay? And so we're just going to do the cosine of 40 degrees times our magnitude 8 that's going to give us our VXI, which is 6.1. So that would be 6.1 meters per second. To solve for our Y component here, we're going to use the sine function. Um, so it would be sine of 40 times our magnitude, which is 8. And so that's going to give us a, a vertical velocity of 5.1 meters per second. Okay, So when I have an angle type problem, I go straight to the vector, I find my x and y component, and that's where I begin what I know and what I don't know. Okay, So my known values, we said uh, vxi, that ended up being 6.1 meters per second. Our vyi ended up being 5.1 meters per second. Okay, and then what else do we know based on the problem? Well, we know the distance, okay, the horizontal distance. So that's our xf, our final distance was 20 meters. 
<laughs> Usually when I know my my um, distances, whether vertical or horizontal, if I know my final, I can probably think of what my initial was, and usually our initial position ends up being zero meters. Okay. Now the 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 question is asking for the vertical, the uh, vertical distance. How tall is the building? So where is the ball beginning? So our unknown value, since we're talking about distance right now, we don't know what our initial position was in terms of the vertical distance. But we do know that the ball is going to land on the ground, and so its final distance is going to be zero meters because it lands on the ground. Okay. And what else do we know? Well, we know we're working with gravity, so that's our acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. Those are all of our known values, and the only other thing that we don't know is time. Okay. With these projectile motion type problems, you're usually going to end up with two unknown values, one of them being time, the other being what the question is asking for. And the idea is, because in all three of these equations, time is the same, if we can solve for time in one of these equations, we can then use that time in any of the other equations to solve for our other unknown value. Okay? So let's figure out what, what is the best equation to use to solve for time. In our case for this problem, our top equation uh, we can use to solve for time because we know xf, we know xi, we know vxi and so then we can solve for time. Once we solve for time we can go ahead and plug that into this middle equation and solve for yi to solve the problem. Okay, So let's go ahead and do that. We set our xf, uh, so using this top equation, xf was 20 meters that's going to equal xi, which was 0 meters, plus our vxi, which was 6.1 meters per second squared times time. Okay, well, we know the 0 kind of goes away, so we get 20 meters equals 6.1 times time. And we're going to divide by 6.1 meters per second. So we get our time value of 3.3 seconds. All right. Now that we know our time, we're going to plug that into this middle equation and solve for yi. Okay. So our yf ends up being 0 meters. We don't know what yi is. We do know vyi, which is 5.1 meters per second. We're going to multiply that by our 3.3 .3 seconds. Mm, subtract our one half a times t squared. So there's our 3.3 .3 seconds again. The reason why this 9.8 here is positive is because we already have the negative out in front that distributes to all of these um, variables here. Okay. So now it's just a matter of solving for yi. Uh, we're going to break this down just algebraically. Here we go. So 0 meters equals yi plus 5.1 times 3.3 .3 gives us 16.83. 1 half 9.8 and 3.3 .3 squared. Multiply all of those. We end up with a negative 53.36. Forgive me for not using units here. Okay, so uh, let's combine our terms. Zero equals yi. Sixteen point eight three minus fifty three point three six gives us a negative thirty six point five three. I can guarantee you this is in all meters. Meters over here. So we're going to add this to both sides. we know that yi, so the height of the, the building, ends up being 36.53 meters. Okay. 
Hopefully this video has helped you in solving your own projectile motion type problem. Uh, the advice that I have for you is if you have an angled problem, you have to resolve your vector first so that you know what your VXI and your VYI values are. Think critically to solve for the rest of your known values. Go ahead and use your equations appropriately to solve for the problem. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys later.